Uh, okay, so for the non-footy people in the room, I will take a moment to introduce our next guest. Um, he coached North Melbourne under-19s for between 83 and 91, and the team won the, uh, made the grand final nine years in a row, and won it five times. He had one year at Essendon, coached the reserves, and they won the flag. And he had uh, 93, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 2002 at North, um, won two premierships and then coached Carlton for 104 games in 2003 and 2007. Um, please join me in welcoming the North Melbourne Footy Club Turn of the Century coach, Mr Dennis Hager. Uh, good evening and thanks for the opportunity to say a few words tonight. Um, I've known Greg Ryan for a hell of a long while now. Um, we're sort of in time. My wife and his father are cousins. Um, we've known the family for a long while and I've seen Greg in all stages of his life. I've seen him in moments when things aren't going well for him. I've seen him when he's got, you know, north of winning games. I don't think I know anyone who understands the history of the North Melbourne Football Club and, and can put his fingers on it to back it up as uh, Greg Ryan does. He has got some special qualities. And I know um, that, you know, Greg has been through some tough times. And I mean, really tough times. I think if, if I was going through the situations like Greg's been through, how would I handle it? I don't think I would have handled it as well as, well as Greg. To have that sort of, uh, I suppose, for want of a better expression, ailment or congenital aberration, uh, the correct terminology, I don't know what I would have, what, 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 what I, what I would have come to. But Greg's been able to carry that and continue on. And you've only got to read the book and see the situations and the issues that he's had. And, you know, I take my hat off to him. I've met a lot of people involved in football. Um, a lot of them have got special qualities. But I put, I put Greg Ryan up there with the very best. The, the, the support he's given the North Melbourne Football Club and myself has been nothing short of uh, amazing. I know the football club and the people who work there and you know people like uh, Dr. Con Metropolis and the late Judy Francis and so many others who were there for Greg um, in, his, in his moment of need. Sometimes I tried to uh, help Greg. I know my tough love philosophy has never worked. Um, but um, sometimes I just hope he got one or two or three things. I wish I was good as uh, Con Metropolis in the way I handle people in this situation because I'll tell you what, the longer, you, the longer you're involved in this uh, earth, the better you uh, become. I've written a few notes today, so I'm going to cheat a little bit and just have a look at a few things that I've, uh, I've written about. You know, a lot of tough individuals at the North Melbourne Football Club in the 90s, and it was a very masculine, um, uh, for want of a better expression, a ballsy environment. And for Greg to uh, be involved there and, and carry his um, issues and that through there speaks volumes for him. I wouldn't have liked to have uh, been there. And I know all my coaches had a tough love um, philosophy. And I think if I go back 25 years ago and think when I was coaching 20 years ago, I'd say to myself, was I good in that area? I certainly wasn't. Um, I think we've got better as we've got older. I know that uh, there was one player who played for the club um, we were playing up at the Gabba um, mid to early 90s and we were a couple of goals down uh, and he was one of the leaders and we came in at half time and he was in the corner crying his eyes out and I thought to myself, what is going on here? Players were coming to me, what's wrong with so-and-so? And, -so? and uh, I've, always, I've always believed, especially when I uh, first started coaching, my, my philosophy was um, toughen up princess, if it's too hot in the kitchen, get to the outhouse. Um, it's only with the uh, um, people I've been involved with uh, since that makes me understand. A dear friend of mine, and he, I, he, I know he won't uh, mind me saying, uh, he's my horse trainer and one of my best friends, John Sadler um, had severe depression and you yeah, have a mental illness like that and I always thought, gee, um, you, you're uh, stretching the friendship a bit, Ed. Um, you're faking it a bit. But I spent probably two weeks when he was at his lowest end. He couldn't get out of bed. He had the, he had the medication, he had to try and get it. And I used to go around and see him. And I just felt 
that I was just such such a weak individual for not coming to terms and understanding um, uh, situations with people who are crook like that. And I think, you know, I know now, and I suppose it's about life. You get better as you, uh, as you go on with things and you say to yourself, oh, I understand that better now. And I'm, look, I haven't got the slightest inclination to be involved coaching football teams now, but I tell you what, I reckon I can make a better fist of it now than I did when I was doing it, you know, 15, 20 years ago. And understanding people more. And I think the elite coaches in the AFL uh, understand individuals. They understand empathy. They understand what, what people go through. They, they listen a lot better. Um, you know, the, 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 they're, they're prepared to get down and have that real care and interest philosophy. And you see, I see it now, even in the AFL, there's so many coaches who think it's about product knowledge. And I'm, I, I can uh, get a better uh, set of rounds set up, and our boundary throwers are going to be better, and I can do better plus ones and um, you know fold backs, and um, we, we can get inside 50 by doing this and doing that. It's not. It's about people, and I reckon everybody can learn from it. You, you, you look at the elite coaches in the AFL; they know how to influence and shape events. They know how to get inside their players' heads. They know when to uh, shut up. They, they, they know how to control mind and body better than some of the other coaches. And I just see it now, and probably a perfect example of that. And I just love the uh, honesty of Damien Hardwick to say what he'd been doing the last eight years and how they turned it all around this year and won the premiership. And you know what? We, what we are today, and I know what I am, it's what my, what my teachers, my parents, um, my coaches, and all the people I associate with, and it's all in a big melting pot. And the longer you live on this earth, and the further you go down the track, the better you get, you get at things. And I don't care who you are, whether you're a, a shopkeeper, a local butcher, the, the baker, the local physiotherapist, the local doctor, everybody gets gets better. And I, you know, I, I, Sebastian just speaking a few moments ago, and I just can't believe how well he spoke. But I know, you know, I look at him now, he's lucky to me to be, you know, 38 years of age, I don't know how old you are, uh, uh, Sebastian, but I know in 10, 15 years' time, you're going to be a better uh, at what you do. And that applies to everybody in the room. So don't think for one moment that you can't get better with what you do. I didn't know anything about mental illness. I didn't know anything about the issues. And I didn't really, didn't really think to think of myself to try and get better in some of these areas. And I, I got on the uh, uh, Beyond Blue website just the other day when I was asked to uh, say a few words here. And I've I heard the word stigma before, but how many people know the stigma involved with mental illness? I just want to read a definition to you um, that I got off the Beyond Blue website. And I think it probably hits home more than anything else. The definition of a stigma marks a person as different. It is defined as a mark of shame, disgrace, dis disapproval, which result in an individual being rejected, discriminated against, and excluded from participating in a number of different areas of society. And I, and I, I think about that now and I think, gee, if only I could have been better when I started off my coaching. And you know, I'd like to think that I've helped a lot of people along the way. I know I could have been better in a lot of areas. Anyway, um, life's not always about um, giving another chance to rectify things. I've often talked about the forms of courage to the players I coached. And I reckon there are four types of courage. I reckon there's spontaneous courage. It's your first response to an action without thinking. Someone hits you on the chin, you go straight back and hit him on the chin. It's, it's not the sort of courage you want. Talk about Dutch courage. What's your uh, exhibit when you've had a few drinks or, God forbid, taken a few drugs? And uh, anybody can do that. Uh, my wife could even do that. <laughs> expected courage. It's what expected you following an action, especially when you're in front of your peers. You know if you don't do something, um, you know, you're going to be look, look like a fool. But I think the most important courage of the whole lot is resolved courage. And I know um, that some of the boys, and I look out in the room now and I see, you know, uh, Anthony Stevens and Glenn Archer and Dean Laveley, they knew 
what, what the consequences of an act was going to be before they ran out in the ground. And there was no way, regardless of what that act was, that they were going to change their, their approach um, or, or, or their style of play. And it's one of the reasons why the North Melbourne Football Club was so successful. I can't see, well, Corey McCoonan was the same thing. I see another player who played during the 90s. I think in some of the, some of the times that Corey went for marks over the head running with the flight of the ball and he was going to get hit, but he just never took his eye off the ball. And, you know, I was so, so thrilled to be involved with those sorts of players. And they're the, they're the four types of courage that I know of. But when I, when I was going to speak tonight, I come to the conclusion there's another type of courage. And I call it the Greg Ryan courage for what he's been through and the way he's carried himself. As I said earlier, I certainly wouldn't have been able to carry myself like him. And I'll take my hat off to you, Greg. You're a marvellous son. Thank you, Dennis, for those very words. And, uh...